again everyone. As you can tell from the title, this is our oil and oil filter change. And uh, yeah, that's me flying. We had put, took the doors off uh, yesterday, I think, uh, that's warm enough for us to fly around without the doors and we really enjoy that. And like I can see here, you can read, uh, we I'm gonna warm up the engine, get the oil uh, nice and hot uh, when we do the filter change. Because when we do the uh, change, we take a sample and mail it off to the lab so they can do a uh, oil analysis of it and see if we're having any abnormal wear indications. That just gets a good, nice sample to the lab for that. And um, let's see here. That's our little hangar that we have at the local airport. And uh, we'll go ahead and go through the procedure here. This whole video went last about 12, 12 minutes long, and I'll try and talk that long without repeating myself or uh, boring you too much with what's going on. The cam locks we have right now, we took the butterflies off and have the Phillips head cam locks on board. It's just a little bit easier to, to mess with that with a Phillips head screwdriver because the uh, butterflies, believe it or not, were actually kind of hard on to, to do with your bare hand. And I figure, well, if, we, if it's going to get cold on us later on, we have a glove on, you're going to have a screwdriver in your hand anyway or available with you. It's still rough looking compared to some of the other airplanes flying out there from the Just Aircraft Highlander factory, but uh, we uh, we like keeping it uh, utilitarian right now. Well, as we go along with our maintenance and with our flying, we'll uh, glass in, fiberglass in some of the uh, uh, fittings that we have, just have holes right now. Well, uh, what my son's doing right there is just burping the engine, getting the oil engine oil out from the crankcase back into the, uh, into the uh, oil tank which is I have the cap off in my hand right there and uh, I had a burping procedure on let me see here I'm, I'm pointing right there at a oil thermostat we install that that bypasses the oil radiator and allows the oil to, uh, temperature to rise a lot quicker uh, during uh, cold weather operations and during the warm weather operations it takes a while actually for the oil to get it to temperature 120 degrees is what they're looking for before we apply takeoff power. We installed a quick drain uh, plug right there. Just go ahead and snap it up and position it, and it uh, drains the oil right from the oil tank. And uh, that's a little sample oil uh, container that he has right there. He's just letting it drain a little bit, get to the sample, and we'll mail it off to the lab. Well, that's draining there. Um, we have everything set up to replace, of course, the oil as well as the filter. And we use the uh, the prescribed uh, uh, mobile one uh, f motorcycle filter or motorcycle oil. That valvoline system uh, transmission fluid right there is for our truck, so don't get confused on that. All right, the oil is drained. I went ahead and uh, turned off the uh, quick drain. I'm going to move the table up underneath the oil filter so he, he can uh, remove that and it's going to uh, drip a little bit of oil off down on the ground so he's got in a pre-position the oil tank the uh, the, the uh, tray underneath it the engine is still relatively high right now and it's just you have to kind of be careful with that have engine wrap around the exhaust Manifold, you can see the EGT probe right there, trying to be careful with that while we uh, work on that. And we just uh, not hand tighten that uh, oil filter, but uh, just do a quarter turn pass hand tight, and I'll tell you what, it does uh, stay in position there. So it took a little bit of a yank, yank to get that thing off. All right, he's got the oil filter off, cleaning up the mess. You can see right there where the oil filter goes and looking for anything unusual there but nothing to see really and let's see here it'll uh, continue to wipe down and i have the little handheld camera trying to not get in his way while he's doing it and uh, he likes to do this and i understand why but pre-fill the oil filter and that, that keeps any uh, vapor lock or whatever else coming on in the engine because the engine is very not uh, intolerant of any low oil pressure for any amount of time. So we uh, fill up that oil filter and let it uh, soak in. And then we do the standard thing um, on the oil seal, the filter seal there. He'll uh, dab a little bit of oil, put it around that filter seal. So it might be a nice seal when he uh, spins it back on there, nice and tight. And 
wiping it down and I'll do a quarter turn with the oil filter wrench a little strap on there. You can look at see our propeller. It's an Ivo prop and electrical uh, electrically adjustable propeller. We've enjoyed that. That's been our our latest and uh, third edition on the uh, on the aircraft, and we enjoy that performance it has with this 80 horsepower engine. I'm asking them right there. We do four course or three course. We're just going to do three because uh, you don't want to overfill it, and um, and then we'll check that. Of course, we'll check the oil level once he gets it up to speed. And there he is. He's checked that little dipstick goes right down into your center hole and the little cap. About every other oil filter change we'll go ahead and disassemble the oil tank and uh, clean it out as well but right now we've uh, bypassed that procedure today because we just want to keep flying and now we're going to do a leak check and uh, don't I'm not showing you this right now but he went through all the uh, quart turn fasteners on all the fuel lines and oil lines and the coolant lines make sure that they're all still uh, tight and no drips things like that so now we're ready to do a post engine run he's saying uh, I was gonna put the cowling on but he said let's go ahead and run it now before we put the cowling back on to check for leaks so I'll do the honors of cranking it up and he'll look outside it really does help to have two people um, doing this because you know another set of eyes another set of brains out there because uh you know, one person doing something and he forgets what he did and you'll see here that i oh well, john turned off the fuel um the fuel selector and i didn't oh, okay great so i didn't see that but he did that for safety and good idea so we have the fuel pump on now i have good pressure now it should start pretty easy there we go and what I'm looking for right now is uh, oil temperature or oil pressure rise immediately and there it is and now they will get the oil up to temperature. Uh, we really do like this uh, electronic flight instrument so we can go to any, any uh, parameters out there and see it. Alright, post flight or post uh, run inspection is complete. Now we're going to button up the cowling and uh, do uh, one more thing on the in, on the aircraft, and that's going to be our fuel filter uh, a check. We have a total of three fuel filters, uh, two inline filters, and then one is up there actually at the fuel pump. So we installed uh, a, a, a that third fuel filter uh, right past the fuel tanks and right before the uh, the fuel pump, the electric fuel pump anyway. And that's uh, the Micron filter. This. Uh, not replaceable but reusable. He took that off and now you're going to see right here what it looks like. It's like a little fish tank filter of some sort. It's a real fine mesh. There's a little bit of goop right there. Nothing much to speak of. Just normal crud. He's going to blow it out. I use MEK that way you get a really good burn on your cuts and in your hands but he'll use this a, a spray cleaner there, carb cleaner. Spraying it out which really gets a good flow going out there just to make sure that we have no nothing in there. We do have fiberglass uh, fuel tanks, but we have not had any uh, fiberglass in our fuel lines or in our fuel filters. Here's where we he took apart the uh, fuel fil took the fuel filter off from the from the fuel line. You know, uh, that's part of our belly pan thing. It's kind of ugly, but it is very very useful to be able to get in there as rather, rather than going over the seat and into the cockpit. Now we can just do it from outside snaps it in there or bolts it in there and then we'll do it turns on the fuel line on either side the head pressure will show any leaks so we double check the leaks yeah we should have uh, safety goggles on for that but uh, we'll do that next time and as well as rubber gloves but uh, right now it's just pretty easy to work on here's our little transponder antenna right next to his head and then we'll button it back up on the uh, on the access panel, I'd like to eventually do a either fabric panel and have an access panel on top of that. And just continue that fabric panel all the way up to the uh, to the foot wells, but uh, that will come in a later date, I'm sure. All right. So we've uh, gone through a little checklist there. Well, we've completed the oil, you know, drain the oil, filled it back up with oil. That's another important thing. Then check the, for the leaks. 
and now we're ready for a post-flight run and I'll let him do the honors on that since he did all the work and uh, that's about it for the uh, for the adjust aircraft Highlander oil change same procedure uh, for cranking it up a hot start or cold start with the electronic fuel injection or not the electronic it's a manual fuel, fuel injection and uh, then we'll go around the pattern and have fun with it thanks again for your interest in the uh, in this aircraft and on in our progress and hope you see you either, either at Sun and Fun or uh, somewhere at some other local airport.